Hello, how are you guys? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Monica. I am a business owner, salon owner, entrepreneur, fitness enthusiast, all of the above. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about my business and how I started it two years ago. I also wanted to give you guys maybe a little bit of advice for those of you who want to be entrepreneurs or are thinking about starting your own business, give you guys a little bit um, of what I went through and things that you can avoid, things that I would recommend, things like that, help you out a little bit while also telling you a little bit more about myself while I do my hair because I am looking crazy. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy and you all learned something. Thank you guys so much and I'll see y'all later. So basically what I'm going to do is add some more dark than my permanent to this black and then add some more baby pink to this side. So this is the pink that I use. It's Joico Color Intensity. I really like these colors because they're super vibrant and they last a pretty long time. I'm going to be using 2M of Redken Shades EQ for the dark side and then this is the processing solution. Because I don't want this to be very, very bright, the pink, I'm going to use mostly clear with just a couple drops of pink and soft pink. So this is about how much soft pink to clear to pink I'm using. The white is the clear, the obviously the lighter pink is the soft pink, and then the really dark one is pink. So I'm gonna mix up my dark. For this I'm gonna do about an ounce. No, a disaster. I am 23 years old. I started doing hair behind the chair when I was 18 in 2015. So I got my cosmetology license in high school. It was a cosmetology class that you would start from your junior year of high school and you would get your license from your senior year of high school. After um, a couple months of being in cosmetology, I realized that I really liked it and I was really good at it because a lot of the girls would come to me if they needed help or anything like that. Obviously, I wasn't like amazing from the beginning, but I definitely picked it up quicker than other people. After high school, I was working at Noodles and Company and I was like, one day I was just like, why am I still here? Like, I have a whole cosmetology license, I should work over at a salon. I wanted to go to college, but obviously college is really expensive, so I couldn't afford it. So I was like, okay, let me start doing hair. And I did really like it at the time, so I was like, let me see how far, like, you know. But this was like, from the beginning, it was never my intention to make it my career, but I am so, so freaking glad and so freaking thankful that I did make it my career, because trust me guys, I love what I do and learning is so much fun. And just every day is so much fun. I really, really enjoy doing hair. But luckily, one of my uh, mom's friends actually owned a hair salon close to where we live. Well, it was like 20 minute drive. It was like an hour bus ride, which is what I had to do. I started working there from July 15th to December 2018. And the reason why I left that salon was because I wanted to learn more about like color and things like that. And that salon was really more of like a barber shop. Usually it's like, they do a lot of men's haircuts. They do do color here and there, but they don't tend to stay very like up to date with techniques and stuff like that. So I definitely wanted to do more creative things. There was a hair cutting down the street from my house and I was like, hmm. I did um, hear about hair cutting's like not so good reputation, obviously. But I was like, you know what? I can learn, they'll probably give me a job. Cause I was fresh out of school and I really didn't like know much. I just knew how to do men's haircut, which I learned how to do at the barbershop. So let me tell you guys this. I used to go and I'm not condoning to do this because this sounds very unsafe now that I think about it. But we used to go, me and my coworker, when I was learning how to cut hair, we would go to like 7-Eleven or um, places like that and we would go off of these um, people haircuts. It's usually the people who are there like waiting for work. We would offer them free haircuts and we would let them know like, hey, like I'm learning, but we would like to offer you a free haircut. Um, you want to to practice and so you can receive, you know, a free haircut. And usually they would agree and we would take them to the salon and we would cut their hair and we would take them back. And you know guys that sometimes that's just what you have to do. You have to do people do people for free. You have to take models. You have to you have to experiment. You have to be willing to learn. You have to be able to work and not receive for a while in order to get better and to you know really advance your skills and become a better hairstylist. Because that's the only way you're gonna learn. You need to try new things, you need to experiment, you need to get better. Obviously don't experiment on people unless they let you, but get yourself a nice little mannequin and teach yourself some new things. After that um, I was at hair cuttery for about three years almost. So I was at hair cuttery from November 2015 to April 2018. And I was at hair cuttery for five months and then I became a assistant manager. So with the assistant manager position, I did a lot of the um, salon like paperwork. I did a lot of the hiring, assisted with hiring, assisted with money management, assisted with making orders, putting orders for all the salon tools, salon supplies, salon colors, like everything. It was a lot. Hair cutting was definitely, definitely a little bit overwhelming, but there was a lot that I did learn and that I was able to bring with me into this salon and this new workspace and new experience that I'm going to have with owning my own shop. I dealt a lot with customers, with employees, so it was a lot, it was everything. It was customers, it was employees, it was supplies, it was money management, it was salon management, and all this only got 
more intense at when I became a manager. So I was a regular stylist for five months and then I became an assistant manager and then after another five months I became a manager. So they gave me my own shop. I believe I was 18 or 19 years old, straight out of um, high school, literally had graduated summer 2015, became a manager, I think it was like spring 2016, which was great. It was right before I turned to, uh, 19, so I was the youngest manager. And when I tell you guys, it was hard. It was very hard having to get used to managing with employees. That was the hardest part for me, but I definitely, definitely did learn a lot. To have better leadership skills and have better people management skills, you know? Um, I have learned in my time that you always have to be very open-minded. Throughout every experience that you have as a hairstylist, you have to be very open-minded because you're always going to be um, learning new things, whether it be technical things like actually doing hair or just learning how to better handle your finances, learning how to better handle clients, learning how to better handle like, you know, difficult situations. It's a constant, constant stream of learning, so you always have to stay open-minded as a hairstylist or even as like a nail artist, any kind of artist really, you always, you're always learning, things are always changing and evolving, so it's good to stay up to date with the trends and techniques and stuff like that. In April of 2018 is when I switched over and got my own solo salon studio. And what this is, it's basically a 10 by 10 room, it's a really small room, and you are working in there by yourself with one guest. Uh, one or two guests is what I used to do. Sometimes I would do two people at a time. And basically it's your own business. You have your LLC, you have all your permits, you have your salon license, you have your business license and everything, you have your insurance and everything, but it's a small room and you pay weekly rent. And the reason why I did this is because I was at Sally's. I was at Sally's and I saw one of my old coworkers and it's somebody who had worked with me when I was at my very first hair cutter. I forgot to tell you guys. So I became assistant manager of the hair cutter that I first started at and then after five months, um, they gave me my own hair cutter and it was in a different location. It was a brand new location. So I got to open that up as an 18 year old, which was crazy. And I saw my old coworker and she was um, buying some things and she was like, oh my God, like I hadn't seen her in what, like four or five months. She was like, oh my God, how have you been? How's everything? How's things going at hair cutter? I was like, they're going great. I love it, but I'm like very tired. I'm thinking like that I want to go to a new salon. At this point, I had been looking at different salons that I wanted to potentially work at. She started talking to me about what she had been doing for the past couple of months and she told me she opened up her solo studio. Basically, there's about 20 something other studios. I think there's a total of 30 something studios and you all are in this building. The building can be locked up. You can bring people in. You always have access to your studio. It's a pretty good price. It makes it easier for you to go out on your own than to have like a full salon. So I do recommend looking into a studio space if you are looking to go out and do your own thing. If you want to start small, which was definitely good for me because I didn't have the money to afford like a full space. But in looking into going on my own to other salons, there was always something that I didn't like or there was like something wrong with like the pay was not enough or like the location wasn't good. So we were at Sally's, so she calls the building manager for the solo studios and she calls them right then and there and I'm like, oh my God, okay. So she scheduled up a tour for me right on, there on the spot and I am so, so thankful that she did that because I went in the next week and I toured the studio and I fell in love. Oh my God, this place was perfect. The bathrooms were so clean. The space was great. It was a small room. It was like the size of my little studio back there. I'm gonna show you guys. So I was there from April 2018 to March 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Let me tell you guys about how I got my current salon now. So I was on Craigslist in the middle of the night around like July of 2019 and I was just browsing. I was not looking for a space. I didn't think I could afford a space. I was gonna wait till around sometime 2020 to get my full salon. But I saw this cute little space in the cutest neighborhood near where I currently live, which is like 20 minutes away from the salon, in Old Town Alexandria. And for those of you who don't know what Old Town is, it's basically a really nice outskirt or like suburb of DC. It's literally like 10, 15 minute drive and it's amazing. It's a nice little bougie neighborhood. So I love that. Very, very cute. All the buildings look super old and vintage, which is definitely my vibe. I knew instantly I had to have it. I was like, this is it. This is the one. This is perfect for me. The size, the location, the price, everything. The price was what sold me. So I went ahead and I emailed them and he set something up and I came and I looked at it like a week later and I had paper signed, contract signed by August 2019, the beginning, like the first couple of weeks. I was so, so, so happy until I realized how annoying Old Town is with permits and, and licenses and things like that just because they like to preserve the uh, vintage look and you know, it's very hard with construction and stuff to do that. They don't like you to change up a whole lot. 
So it took me a couple months to get my construction permits because I had to tear the floor out, and I'm gonna show you guys. So I had to tear the floor out to put in the plumbing for the shampoo bowl because it was not set up to be a salon. And then I had to put in extra electrical outlets. So this was the size of the studio that I was in before. So as you can see, it's very, very small compared to the rest of the salon. Quick spin, like we have a lot of space compared to the small room. But basically we had to put in a bunch of electrical outlets because it was not set up to be a hair salon. So obviously it didn't have enough. So we put those in, please excuse my mess. We put those in and yeah, so that was pretty pricey. Now this is my salon. It's been five years since I started doing hair and I absolutely love, love, love doing hair. It is my passion. It is something that I really enjoy. I really enjoy to do. I really enjoy to learn. I really enjoy to teach. That's another thing that I want to do is I want to teach. So that is part of the reason why I started making YouTube videos is because I really like helping people and I would like to be able to help other hairstylists similar to myself or maybe people who aren't even starting their careers. You can be doing hair for 10 years and now you are realizing that you can go out and do this on your own and I definitely, definitely encourage you. And there are just a few things that I do want to talk about, things that I've learned in the process. Obviously the most important thing and the first thing you're going to learn is how to get clients. I learned that my favorite way to get new guests was through referrals and through social media. So I created my Instagram in 2016. Um, I wasn't very savvy with it in the beginning. My pictures were crappy. Now I've been getting a lot better. Social media is going to be your best friend. It's going to be able to bring you clients. It's going to be able to bring you potential clients. People should just follow you. They're going to start your page for months and eventually they're going to become clients. I'll use hashtags whenever I post pictures. That's what helps a lot. Be consistent with your posts. We got to milk the heck out of social media and advertising. You can pay for advertising on Facebook, Yelp, Instagram. I always make sure that my pictures look very clean and put together. I also learned that you need to have self-value. If you don't value your work, then other people are not going to value it either. Just charge your worth, have a cancellation policy, and be strict with it. Enforce your rules. If you have a 15 minute cancellation policy, enforce it. Treat every guest equally because at the end of the day, you need to respect your business in order for other people to respect your business. You need to make sure that you are not spreading yourself too thin and you are giving yourself worth and value. You are not just showing up whenever someone wants you to do your hair. You are making sure that it is a client that will value you and your work and that you will want with you in the future. But that um, brings me to you can pick and choose your clients to a certain extent. Obviously, you always have to be inclusive and include everybody, but there are certain situations where you're the stylist. If you know you can't do somebody's hair or there is something that you are not too comfortable with or you are not too sure about, let them know that. Or if there's something about the guest themselves and them not understanding your policies or the way you work, then you should feel comfortable enough to say to somebody, thank you for um, considering me as your hair stylist, but unfortunately, blah, 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 I don't think it'd be a good fit. You need to be able to have those difficult conversations because if you can't, you're going to be put into uncomfortable situations where you're not going to know what the heck you're doing. You also have to be able to grow and you also have to be open-minded. And if there is something that you are not able to do on somebody's hair, you have to be able and open to go and learn how to do that or learn how to better service this guest or, you know, but that doesn't mean go and learn how to do lashes and brows and blah, 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 and this, this, and that in order to please everybody. No, find your niche and focus on it and, you know, master it. And that's essentially, as a business owner, that is what's going to make you very, very successful. When you find something that you are passionate about and you give it your all and you don't let other people bring you down. You kind of just have to go for it and don't let people scare you. Go in it with the mindset of anything can happen, but I'm going to make sure that it's success. You have to manifest it. You have to speak it into existence. You're going to be successful and you will do it because if you set yourself out to do something and you put forth 100% effort and you're consistent, you're going to do it. Even if you're at a point where you're like, I'm so tired of doing hair, like I'm going nowhere, I'm not making that much money, I'm doing this, this, and that, and that. Well, sit back and look and think about what can you do different? What is it that's holding your business back? If you were, this is one thing as a business owner, I always like to think in this way. If you were a client, what would make you want to go to your salon? What would make you want to get your hair done by you? You know, what would you want to see on social media from your hair salon? Ever since I started doing that, it's been working great for me. You always have to put yourself in the consumer's shoes. So, so I think it's time to rinse myself out. I've been sitting with this for like an hour now. that you guys enjoyed this video and I was able to give you guys some helpful information if you are looking to go off on your own or you are looking to become an entrepreneur or an independent stylist. If there is anything else that you would like to know, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!